my Omega Index, this was part of the panel. You can see that according to uh, their reference ranges, my EPA and DHA are within normal, as is my arachidonic acid. But my omega-3 index, they say, is in the moderate. Now, I'm just going to say this gently. Uh, the omega-3 index is bullshit. It's based on epidemiology. And I think that the epidemiology it's based on looks at people in Japan who have higher levels of omega-3 in their blood and red blood cells and says, oh, these people do better. Well, it's epidemiology. So we must not forget that they could just be doing other health behaviors rather than the omega-3 being beneficial for them. In many studies, omega-3 is beneficial, but I think the main benefits are in attenuating the damages of omega-6. I think one of the problems with omega-6 is that omega-3 and omega-6 share the same share the same series of elongase and desaturase enzymes. And that when you have lots of omega-6, things like linoleic acid and 18-carbon omega-6 polyunsaturated fatty acid, you are going to gum up those uh, synthetic mechanisms for omega-3s. Humans need some EPA and DHA. Again, not eating a ton of egg yolks at the time. They could be a little higher in my blood work, and they probably will be now that I'm back in Costa Rica, getting more egg yolks, two a day, maybe three. I'm really trying to find low linoleic acid egg yolks, chickens that are not fed corn and soy, but it's really hard forthcoming more on that. But I think that one of the main problems with linoleic acid is it causes omega-3 deficiency. We need a small amount of these molecules. So I think that when you give omega-3 to people, it may benefit them because it's giving them something they can't make because most of the population is full of omega-6s. I don't think omega-6, I don't think omega-3 is that valuable on its own though. And I don't think excess amounts of omega-3 are a very good idea for any humans at all. I've spoken about this in the past, guys. I would not recommend massive omega-3 supplementation. Here's a very interesting uh, editorial, 2019. In um, This is from JAMA. Um, omega-3 fatty acids and atrial fibrillation. And you can see here the author, Gregory Kerfman, notes four trials, the strength trial, the reduce it trial, the OMEMI trial, and the vital rhythm study. And he says, consider together the data from the four trials suggest, but do not prove there may be a dose-related risk of atrial fibrillation with omega-3 fatty acid intake. At a dose of four grams per day, there was a highly statistically significant increased risk in, uh, in risk, nearly a doubling with intermediate dose of 1.8 grams per day. The increase in risk did not achieve statistical significance, but the omega-3 pundits, the omega-3 proselytizers will go on podcasts like Rogan's um, and say four grams of omega-3 is what you need per day, but in these four trials there was a statistically significant increase in the risk of atrial fibrillation, a very negative heart arrhythmia having to do with left atrium, which can lead to blood clots, which can go to your brain. Uh, not a good thing. You don't want atrial fibrillation at doses of four grams per day of omega-3 fatty acids. That's not really something that humans should be doing, guys, especially not from fish oil supplements that are oxidized. And I don't think that's a good thing. Yet another study, uh, I'm going to kick uh, omega-3s a little further down. Uh, this is a Animal study, dietary fatty acids and oxidative stress in the heart mitochondria. The rats were fed for 16 weeks, coconut, olive, or fish oil diet. The fish oil diet led to the highest oxidative stress in cardiac mitochondria, an effect that could partly be prevented by the antioxidant probucol. So you do not want to be pushing lots of omega-3s in your diet. I think those calling for excess omega-3s, lots of omega-3s in the diet need to answer to those concerns of mine and many others. If you get omega-3s in your animal fat, that's fine. Tallow has omega-3s in it. It's fine. It's a small amount. Eggs have a little bit of DHA and EPA. Fine. Do not take fish oil supplements. This is not a reason to eat fish. If you listen to this podcast regularly, you know that even a few weeks ago, I talked about an epidemiology study that showed an association between fish consumption and melanoma risk, and no one is talking about that. It probably has to do with the PCBs, the heavy metals, and their contaminants in fish. Fish is bullshit, in my opinion, guys. It's better than kale, but put a lot in your diet, and you're going to accumulate those toxins, and I think you're going to increase your risk of melanoma and potentially atrial fibrillation, but fish oil supplements, garbage. Throw them away. So you can see here, my omega-6 to omega-3 ratio, fine. They're saying my EPA to arachidonic acid ratio is low, but if you look at their reference range, I'm at 0.1. <laughs> 
anything greater than 0.2 is fine. I think it's kind of a silly test. They probably want my uh, EPA to be a little higher than it is. I'm totally fine with an EPA of 1.4, according to their levels. And my arachidonic acid is fine. Uh, they say the low risk range is 5.2 to 12.9. I'm at 11.2. Arachidonic acid has many valuable things in the human body. 